we've already done that. So anyway, basically, as you can see here, the gearbox from the V80 has been removed. Uh, it was damaged uh, uh, before we put it in. Basically, it was damaged in transit or something. Uh, it had just a hairline crack, basically just along here when we installed it onto the V80. Obviously, since it's had this vibration, um, that has just propagated the whole way through and, and broken off. We've also realized that the other side at the same point has also cracked. So we were planning on getting it welded up um, by a mate who's sort of done a fair bit of cast alley welding. But once we found out that the other side here was also cracked, it was basically decided that uh, this case was just never going to be basically safe and reliable. So don't, don't trust it enough. We just don't trust the case enough. So Rex has ordered a new box. Um, you should pick that up in the next couple of days. But either way, basically, um, obviously this box, as you all know from our issues we had with the reluctor wheel not being correct and it dropping the, the speed sensor from the box and losing the box all the time, uh, we have to put a reluctor wheel in the back of the box anyway. So we're basically going to rebuild the internals of this box into the case that Rex is going to get with his new box with the new reluctor wheel that Rex has bought. Uh, to do so, obviously, you need some kind of gearbox stand or what we are going to try and build as far as a stand for gearbox rebuilding for doing auto boxes. So that's what we're here doing now tonight is uh, basically Rex has got this uh, 20 mil RHS um, and we are going to knock up a bit of a gearbox stand. Something like that. Something like that. Uh, okay. So basically this is going to be simple. an upright box where you can basically land your, your bolt holes or your dowels onto these and it just sort of sits upright. So you can then empty the box. For those of you who don't know, um, like auto boxes are basically the opposite of manuals where you pretty much have to sit them upright with the bell housing up and empty them from the front back. Obviously manuals, or all manuals that I've had anything to do with are a bit different where you stand them up on the bell housing and basically tear them down from the tail down. So a little bit different that way. So that's what sort of stand we're going to be our knocking up here. So that's the idea. And uh, we thought we'd get some footage of what's going on. When does that ever happen? Look at that shit. Oh, that's perfect. Boom. So it's been a little while since like one of us was doing something and the other one wasn't busy and we could actually film us doing stuff. So it's been actually quite a while since that happened. So this is kind of cool. Actually got to make content of Rex doing shit and I don't have to do anything. I just got to stand here and hold the camera. It's great. All right, so that's the basic idea. Run. It's the basic plan. Sesh. Sesh. It's thirsty work. So basically the idea behind this whole situation is that uh, we're gonna space these two apart. Well, Rex has basically decided, basically, to weld a steel bolt on the inside of each of these uprights. And that's those two steel bolts are gonna be perfectly in line with the two dowels for the Chev pattern which means this is going to be good for like 4L80s, 4L60s, Turbo 350s, Turbo 400s. Yeah. Power glides, all the above. Power glides, as basically. Long as, as long as it's Chev pattern. Anything that's Chev pattern, this stand's going to be good for, which is uh, going to be really handy for us, obviously. So basically, yeah, the idea is that to have 
Two steel bolts on the insides, which are going to fit directly through the two dowels. Which is basically all Chev patterns have the same two dowels. And uh, that's pretty much the plan, so that's what's going on. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say about that. Oh, hey there. How you doing? Uh, so this is what we've done so far. Um, we've got them vertical. Everything's looking pretty good. We actually decided rather than put a single brace across the middle, we've actually put two like that and separated them. Because the idea there is that um, when we put your box on and you start stripping it, with the two braces there you could easily sit a tray just to catch any extra oil, anything that comes out of your box as you're stripping it. You know, be environmentally friendly and whatnot. So, yeah, we, we try to have a reason for all of the things that we do. Sometimes those reasons aren't the best. But Most of our reasons for our madness, but... But, yeah, there is method to our madness most of the time. Even if, even if those reasons aren't necessarily good, there's always a reason. So, you know, it is what it is. Oops. <laughs> Teamwork, now I can't see. Yeah, neither can I. <laughs> well, that didn't work. <laughs> I've got some special contact lenses. And they are actually specially made for me that are welding resistant UV reflective contact lenses, so I don't actually need welding masks. Mate, how much you pay for those, motherfuckers, oh, you know? Oh, you must have paid through the ass for it, mate. Mate, I fucking paid a pretty penny, I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah, nah, fucking oaf. Cunt. Oaf with fucking a bunch of Fs, mate. <laughs> not even one F, not even two Fs, like three or more <laughs> multiple Fs in that oaf. Oh, yeah, nah, fucking sounds fucking hey, grouse, hey, eh? I gotta get right, I gotta get right down here with my fucking welding power stance. Huh? <gasps> Yeah, oh. nice, good, it's nice, great. Nice, yeah, good, it's fucking good, it's nice, fucking. Oh, except that bit. That's not good. That's a little bit how you going. Are you sure? As sure as I'm ever gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go this way. Watch out for the oil. There we go. I mean, what's worse that would happen? We could drop it <laughs> and it would crack the case! Or we could just drip oil everywhere. Where's your bloody pan, you genius? Well, the braces are there to hold it. We got a fan. It, it, it's working real good. Look, can I just say, it's hanging pretty it's fucking vertical. It's fucking working pretty damn good. Ah, it's fucking great. It's great! It's great! Oh man, that's still hot! Yeah, you gotta watch that. Hey, um... I'd like to point out that that box is hanging 
perfectly vertical. Oh, fucking banger! Look at that shit, look at that shit. Yeah, the cause, that's fucking right, boy. We never sleep here. We're always on the fucking job. We're always on the clock. Alright, so we're gonna make our back brace there. I've measured some shit. And if you have a look, I'll fucking measure this shit up. So it's a hundred mil off the back side of the box to the frame. You might be able to see there. So I've done some basic calculations here. Now it's a little bit of uh, maths, some trigonometry for you. So we want to have a 45 degree angle there just because that's what I picked and 100 mil. And if you, if you work out your maths there, it's sine 45 is 100 over y, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Which means that our angles at 45, they need to be 155. Otherwise known as 155 millimeters. I need, I need about 150, 155. I need about 155. <laughs> and that's what it is. And it is what it is. It is what it is. Back here this morning, still working on the stand. Fair bit going on. It's looking pretty good. Looking good. Looks good. So just a little bit of support on the feet. Give it a bit more stability, some strength. It's all coming together pretty dang well though. And pretty much the finished product. Throw a lick of paint on it and uh, mint one chev pattern gearbox stand. Jeez. Solid. I don't know if this will be the end of a video, whether it will roll into 480 doing of things for the cruiser. So. If this is the end of the video, cheers for watching guys. Stay tuned for the next uh, episode of, uh, I don't even know what this is an episode of, it's just a video. Um, but stay tuned for us fixing up the V80.